Hello, welcome to the Trial On Podcast. I'm wearing my Cowboys jersey today because I am a loyal supporter of the club. Uh, Denny, how you going, mate? I'm going good. Going good. We've had a pretty big call in uh, the last game of round 19 yesterday. Huge call, actually. Uh, so Jeez. what's happened is uh, the uh, Cowboys are down 26-25. There's one second left on the clock. They kick off. Uh, they there's there's something that goes on in, in back play. The referee does not call time off for anything. No no time off. He doesn't signal uh, the game has been finished. There's been no whistle. And then the Cowboys are saying challenge, 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 and the referee goes up. All right, challenge. We'll we'll have a look at a possible um. What's that word? Escort. Escort. That's the one. Possible escort. They go up, they have a look at it, um, the referee, the bunker, sorry, they come back and say that there was an escort, Cowboys kick for goal, they win the game 27-26, unbelievable, the worst call I've ever seen, probably in my life, I, mate, I, I'm speechless, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I was listening to it on the radio, they were blowing up, uh, I hadn't seen it, I had a few beers and... Needless to say, being on the other side of it and not seeing it and just hearing, like, Valentine Holmes kicks the goal to win the game, like, there's a degree of happiness. But then I started getting messages everywhere because I posted a video of me kind of reacting to the shot of goal. I started getting messages and they started trickling. And then I think you ended up calling me and I thought to myself, if Denny cares about something, then this must be, this must be big. So I go to KO, I go check it out. And honestly, it was absolutely deplorable. It was really, really, really bad. Um, firstly, the challenge. Let's start with the challenge. Yep. There's no way that they should have accepted the challenge. Firstly, you should have just blown time off. Do you, are you thinking the same thing? Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Just game over. Yeah, I don't. I don't really understand how they can challenge if the referee hasn't made a decision on it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he hasn't. Like, I think if he calls an ex- escort, then you can challenge that it's not an escort. Yeah. But I don't think you can challenge it if he hasn't made a decision. Yeah. Um, Graham Annesley addressed that, and there is a quote from him. I'll read that quote. I think they're just making up. They're making up rules as they go. But he says, Every time that a referee calls that it's the last tackle of the game has been completed after full time, if there is an incident in that particular play, then it can be challenged. Now, that I've had a look you know, in the rule book. I cannot find that written anywhere in the rule book, rule book, just so you know. Yep. And I checked straight after he said it because now they, they'll probably add it. Like, they'll probably add it tonight and say that it's, it's been there for years. But that that's not in the rule book. And I, I just think we're just going to open up a can of worms for teams to do that at every opportunity they get. Next, The next part of it is the escort itself. Now, wait, did, you, did you think it was an escort? One hundred percent not. But I knew what was going to happen when they were looking back at it. When they, when the video ref was looking at it, he said he's running. He ran sideways. There's yep. nothing illegal about running sideways as long as you're running in the direction of the ball. Like that, you're allowed to. Yeah, you're allowed to do that. The thing is, you're not allowed to change your line. And he never changed no. his line the entire time. He, 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 he just ran the, the same line the entire time, even though it was sideways. That's allowed. I I think this is where we fall down with our consistency, right? Consistency, kind of, for the fans, it means, like, seeing the same thing. So, for the longest time with an escort, we're taught to look for where his eyes are. So, are his eyes pointed at the ball? Yes, it was. Is he moving in the same direction the whole time? And does he change his line? That's how you condition as a fan to know yeah. if it's an escort or not. Those three markers were... No, yes, he's looking at the ball. Yes, he's moving towards the ball. Yes, he's moving in the same direction the whole time. So then it's not an escort, yeah. right? And that made it so much worse that everyone watched it that way. All the commentators watched it that way. And while it was going on, we're commentating saying, oh, yeah, he's moving towards the ball. Yeah, this is like a slam dunk and stuff. Everyone's saying the same thing. And then the guy that has the final say says the opposite. Mm. That is what has caused... The outrage, I think. I think. I don't know how they dropped the ball that massive. Like, what are they looking at? Oh, I don't know. 
Like I, if I was a Tigers fan, I'd be livid. I would. Yeah, I know. I, I've seen, I've seen some things from the Tigers fans, and they have every right to be. And I, a lot of people have said because I've, I've kind of called it off out. I reckon it's rubbish, and like I've never said a team's been robbed. I don't say that. The Tigers were robbed mm. last night, absolutely robbed. And I think a lot of people find that refreshing coming from Cowboys fan, but I don't want it to happen to any team. Yeah. You know what I mean? I I don't want to be on the other side of it. And you said something uh, last night to me, which we don't really talk about the DMs that we send to each other, but you you said something that really stuck with me. Let's see if I can find it here. Um, what have I said? <laughs> those types of wins just don't make you feel good as a fan. Like if it was if it was my team that won, I wouldn't feel the same. It wouldn't hit the same. And that is such a good point. Like, I have found myself after the win, especially after watching it, feeling empty. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it didn't feel like we deserved the win. The Cowboys have come out and said that they won fair and square. Oh. I, don't, I, don't, I don't love that from the <laughs> club, to be honest. What, what, what are they going to say? We, we cheated. Yeah. Um, I think it's less about the Cowboys. I think it's more about the rules or how the rules are interpreted. The worst thing is, too, the, our best referee was in the box. Yeah. The number one referee, the standard, the goal standard in the game, Ashley Klein, at least from the referee's uh, standpoint, he was the one in the box. And he was the one that got it so wrong. I don't understand how you can get that one as wrong as he did. I, I, yeah, honestly, it I blows my mind. Like, still just thinking about it. I'm thinking how, in what world? Yeah. What did you make of the press conference? Because we, we all look to uh, Graham Ennisley when these things happen, and he knew. I think he spent the whole time on that decision. He, I don't think he talked about another decision at all. It was 11 minutes just straight of him talking about that decision. What did you make of Graham Ennisley and the press conference? Oh, look, I thought he, was, he said a whole lot of nothing. Like, yeah. And he said that the referee blew time off. Like, when you blow full time, there's like a, a whistle and then... Like to call that play has been like called off, and then want to end the yep. game. There was no whistle. So no, well he said he said the bunker got into the referee's ear, which they they kind of denied that happened a couple of years ago. But now they're they're telling everyone that yeah. it does happen. Uh, but the bunker heard the players asking for a challenge, and the bunker was telling the referee that the Cowboys do have a challenge remaining. So that's why he was not blowing anything. He wasn't. And then he went and asked them, what are you challenging? Which Graham endlessly said they don't even have to do that. But they do that every yeah. week. Referees will ask, what are you challenging? Even though they're going to look at the whole play anyway. Yeah. So I don't know why they ask that. That last play thing's absolute rubbish. I think they're just making rules up on this. But I, th- I feel for Graham Ennisley because he has nothing to do with it. Like, he didn't make the call. Yeah. And he sat at home and he said that. He said he sat at home and thought the call was wrong live as yeah. well. But then to just come out with this, come out with this rubbish, you know, like that. There, there's, it shouldn't have even got to that point. They shouldn't have been allowed to challenge in the first place. Mm. I think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, there was no stoppage to the play. Like you cannot challenge a play unless it's been there's time. Look, time has been stopped, or the ref has stopped the play. Yeah, well, I didn't, I didn't know about this soft whistle until today. But then I've seen it a couple of examples, like in that Dragons uh, Raiders game of the soft whistle. Yeah. I didn't know it existed, but apparently there's a whistle before the game ends, and it's like to stop the play, mm. and then he blows the full time whistle. And it's not just like a do 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 like in the Dragons game. There's a good eight seconds between yeah. that whistle and the the game whistle. Yeah, I had to rewatch it because I was I was like, hold on, he's blown his whistle there, and I I was like waiting. I was like, oh, hold on, did I miss it? So I went, I, I went back it, yeah. to the video and then it's at the very end of the video. I'm like, oh. that was a long break in yep. between. But yeah, I think I might have to keep me, uh, me a year out for that uh, next weekend. Well, you know that now they've highlighted it, it'll be it'll happen all yeah. weekend. They'll do, every referee <laughs> will do it all weekend. I, you know I might that. just go back and watch the games from last weekend then, see if they do it every game. Yeah. I think something needs to change in the bunker. I don't know. Do they have, add more people in there? Go like a majority rules type thing. Three people. So then one doesn't get it wrong. Get three people in there just to someone to tell him it's wrong or just give it to the commentators. The commentators yeah. see them to get it right more often than well, not. They got to the video referee and then you hear three blokes just arguing, just yelling at each other, no, yeah. it's this. <laughs> what do you reckon will happen to Ashley Klein? You reckon he'll, uh, they'll stand him down? I'd, 
I've never been a big fan of sacking referees. I just don't mm. think we have enough. We don't have enough good referees. And this isn't... I don't like bashing the referees either because I would hate to do that job. Mm. I think it'd be terrible. But what do you think uh, should happen to Ashley Corn? I think he should get stood down for a little bit, at least. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with you on the sacking. I, that's, I mean, he, he, yeah, he made a mistake. Just stand him down for a couple of weeks. Yeah, let, let the fires burn out because yeah. people are coming for him with pitchforks. I've never seen that a reaction that big to a call. And I think it was because it was right on full time. Mm. But just to get some clarification, we're both against the challenge. We both think it shouldn't have been a challenge. Yeah. We both think it shouldn't have been a penalty as a result of that challenge. Yep. Do you agree that Kyle Felt definitely took a dive? 100%. 100% yeah. he took a dive. There's, like, you've seen it in other games as well. Like When was it? I think it was Josh Reynolds a few years ago, I think, to win the game. Uh, I forget yep. who it was against. Maybe the Bunnies or something. When someone had a hold of his leg and he jumped and did a front flip or something. Yeah, yeah dive towards the yeah, game. Yeah, that, that was a dive I remember for that. sure. And th- yeah, 100% this was a dive. If any, you if see any, it every week, if right? anything, Cole felt changed his line to run into Kapoor. <laughs> <laughs> and the the cheeky grin from uh, Cole felt after the game that yeah, wasn't lovely. No. Like that's just not. Well, I guess you can't really say it's. Uh, you can say actually it's unsportsmanlike. Yeah, but every team does it. I think Josh Jackson in the game before I was at the Bulldogs game, uh, he copped a little slap to the face. He stayed down for a penalty. Like, I think they all do it. As for the Tigers, I feel for the Tigers. They've come up against first and second last two weeks. They lost to they lost to first by two points, and second by one point. Yeah. Might as well be by fifty because, like, it's, it doesn't mean anything to them. What what does that hand them? How many losses in a row for the Tigers? One, seven, two, seven. three, four, five, six, seven. They got to go to SunCorp next week. Oh. Yeah, kind of feel. And if this hands them their first ever. Wooden spoon. That's gonna just be a big kick in the guts. I, I heard that they were gonna uh, the Tigers gonna appeal the decision. Like, I'm not too sure. Yeah. I, so if if the challenge, if the NRL said the challenge wasn't uh, acceptable, the NRL said the challenge shouldn't have happened. I think they would have had a bigger case for an appeal than a referee getting the call wrong because. They accepted the challenge. The, the NRL's come out and said the challenge was, was fine. They're allowed to challenge, which I don't agree with. No. But because they've said that, I don't think they'll be able to dis- dispute the result because it's just a referee making the wrong call in the bunker. You know? Oh, it's, it's the worst call I've ever seen. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but it's it sets a dangerous precedent if like a team ends up trying to overturn a decision. How often are we going to see it? Like, yeah. Well... You know what well, I mean? Well, I think in any close game now, if a team has the challenge in the finals, they're just going to challenge. And they can just say yep. that they want to challenge this, but the video ref has to look at everything in that play. So if the re- video ref 100%. finds one thing wrong in that play, like if, if someone's offside by like a foot or something, that's a it's a penalty straight away and the game continues. Yeah, I was thinking about that. <laughs> like you would just challenge the last moment of that play. Yeah. And then make them look at everything. Yeah, exactly. Because that's yeah. you can find. Oh, we said this. You can find something in almost any ruck. Apparently, you can't. You can't challenge what happens in the ruck before. But from the play the ball, you can find people offside almost any 100%. play. So, uh, yeah. I'd I'd be challenging every single, every single time at full time in a close game. Are we saying yeah? We'll, we'll check yeah. that one. If you if you're behind, obviously. Even if, hold on. So Why not? yeah, any like even if you don't have the ball. You yep. can be like, yeah, we'll, we'll challenge. You can do it. We're challenging. Yep. You knocked it on or whatever, and they're like, oh, they reckon you knocked it on. Go back and look at the whole play. Go back and look at the whole play. I just, and especially on the brink of them bringing in forward pass technology, like if you're challenging the last play, and then they got to check every single pass. Yeah. In that play, you know how many line balls do you see? How many forward passes do you see? Like, I don't know. So. It's a dangerous precedent. I think they'll backtrack on this. I just think they wanted to stamp out the ability for the Tigers to challenge the result. I think that's why they've gone with this line that, yeah, they're allowed to challenge, which I don't think they will. Yep. Uh, so, yeah, it's the one and only time in my life I can say a team was definitively robbed in a game. I think this is 100% a robbery. 
I think usually we go with the line they were robbed of an opportunity to win. The Tigers were robbed. Yeah, hundred percent. Mark the date, twenty fourth of the seventh, twenty twenty two. The first robbery. Tigers were robbed. I could off the top of my head. There was probably others. The Cowboys were probably robbed plenty of times. They were robbed of the opportunity. <laughs> Opportunity. No, I think this was a blatant... This was real yeah. bad. Like, top three worst calls in the history of maybe any sport. Definitely in the NRL era, anyway. For sure. For sure, 100%. What, what, did you, what do you think this means for the Tigers going forward? Do you, do you reckon this hurts a little I, bit? 100% it hurts. They, they won that game. Like, maybe it, it doesn't do anything to their confidence, maybe, but I don't know. Maybe it will just, like... I don't know, just... I don't know. I don't know what it does to the Tigers. It does something. <laughs> I think it's going to hurt them. I think I think it's the same. I think the Cowboys will carry a little bit of stigma as well from this. Going into next week and maybe going forward. I think the Tigers definitely... That, that's got to break them. Like, going one point against the Cowboys, second best team in the comp, uh, two points against Penrith after leading with five minutes to go. Mm. Like, that's, that's two heartbreaking losses for them. I think that really, really hurts the rest of their year. The Tigers. I feel, I feel for them, and I, I just, yeah, I don't know. I, I it, it sucks to be on this side of it because you can't enjoy the win. And up to that moment, I thought it was a really good game. I thought the Cowboys were poor, but I still think it was an entertaining game back and forth. The Tigers definitely deserve the win. Hundred percent. I, you thought they had it in the bag after they scored that last try in the, in the last minute. I don't know. I know, and then there's there's like a, well you you watch the press conference. There's a little bit of a inquiry about when they had to restart the clock. You meant to restart the clock as Dewey's yeah. walking in. They didn't restart it until he kicked the ball. Did Dewey take too long with the shot at goal? I've I've seen this a lot from Cowboys fans. He took a long time with the shot at goal. Well, I, I think it's a good thing for the Cowboys that he took so long with the shot at goal because it, it gives us that one second. Because say we had ten seconds and Laurie just takes the tackle then the play has not stopped. They can't challenge. Mm. Like, if Laurie takes the tackle and then they have another play, then the Cowboys can't challenge. Cowboys can't win. Yeah. So, they're lucky that there was only one play left in the yeah. game. Yeah, so, with the, the... Obviously, the game clock, like the clock that you see on the telly, that isn't the exact mm. time. Yeah, That's yeah, not yeah. the clock. So no, I, it's I not did see some people complaining about the clock had reached zero. And then they added yep. another second onto the clock or whatever. That's not the that's not the actual official game clock. The official game clock is mm. you can't see it not on television. That's no no. So just uh, it's run by people that physically will stand there like with a clock and will go pause <laughs> yeah. clock play pause play. And the referee knows the exact time because of the timekeepers. They're in his <clears> ear. <throat> and towards the end of the game, they actually count him down from ten, yeah. like to when the blow the last whistle. So they'll go ten, nine, oh, okay. eight. Yeah, all the way down. So he's not looking at the clock. He's not looking up at the screen. The timekeeper will count him down to when the game actually yeah. finishes every week. Yeah, which the NRL don't do a good enough job of telling people that either because everyone watches the Fox League clock or the NRL, like the nine clock, and they're like, well, why is yeah. the game over? Not the official clock. Can we not get the official clock? Can Fox <laughs> League not like just go off that clock? Is that that hard? I never thought of that. Is it that hard? I never thought of that. That's a good idea. Let's get the official clock on. <laughs> Why wouldn't we have the official clock on the screen? Oh, it's ridiculous. Some of the, the shit the NRL come out with is just ridiculous, to be honest. And this this was just waiting to happen. The captain's challenge is a farce. The six agains are shit. Wind the game completely back. I, I say, scrap the six, scrap the six again. Scrap the captain's challenge. Get rid of all of it. Blow the bunker up. They will never get rid of the bunker. They that's yeah. one thing. They they swear by the bunker. They love the bunker. So they will never get rid of it. But has it made the game better? That's what I want to know. Has it made the game better? No. I think that like the more rules they keep on adding, the worse it, it gets. Just Yeah, the worse it gets the the harder yeah. it is to watch. Just as leave, a fan. I just go back to like two thousand. Well, let's just get the same guy to referee every game. Pay him a million a year and just get him flying to every game because the, the inconsistencies are killing me. They're, whoever refed that bloody Rabbitoh Storm game, that was the hardest one for me to watch of the weekend. 
the, I think it was the that Ranger ref. I don't know his name. The Ranger ref. But it felt like, yeah, you know that referee. No, <laughs> I know right the here. red hair one. Anyway, the red it, hair bloke. Yeah. Well, in the first half of that game, he called so many six agains and set restarts. I was like, well, are we back in 2020? Can you yeah. settle down? Like, it makes it so hard for me to watch it when that when that keeps happening. And then he kind of slowed down the second half. There was only eight in the game, I think, and then another, what, 13 penalties. That's just too that's many for me. That's, 20, that's 21, 22 infringements. Too many? Like, settle down. Yeah, that's too many. Too many. All right, let's get... Let's, breeze through these games because we wanted to spend a lot of time on that. I know um, people are invested in that. We both think it was yep. the wrong call. Um, I would usually finish this by saying Cowboys on top, but it doesn't seem no. appropriate. But I did say it anyway. Uh, Eels versus the Broncos. Ugh. Yuck. Don't eat. Let's skip. Skip this game. Are you off the off the Are you off the, are you off I've, the Eels? I've been off the Eels for a while now. Like, I haven't. I haven't even watched their last two games, just because I yeah. I could see this coming. I could see a loss to the Broncos coming. And it, I don't know. Power are a good good team. They've got good players in the side. They just they just suck. Does me any. They were dreadful. They were absolutely mm. dreadful. Uh, where do you land on Jake Arthur getting booed by the fans? Uh, just when his name gets announced, I know the the NRL, the Para have. Taken it up with the NRL and the NRL uh, trying to locate the, the section of fans that were doing it. I think they were against it. Um, where do you land on the booing? <sighs> Bit of an overreaction from bloody Para trying to find out who's booing them. Right? I I think you pay your money within reason. You can yeah, do what you want. Like, like, you, you, as, long as, you, as long as you're not going onto the field or doing anything underwards, I think you can... You can definitely use your voice. You can boo. I think Tino that that made that game so much more entertaining. Yeah. The, the Bulldogs uh, Titans game because everyone was into Tino. Uh, not that Jake Arthur's done anything wrong, but I think the crowd are voting with their voice. They don't want to yeah, see him. So out. I mean, yeah. If if they want to boo him, who cares? Like you saw Payne Ars got booed by yeah. like what thirty thousand people back when he he it came out that he wanted a release from his contract at, at Brisbane, but. Yeah, yep. like it. Shit, I don't soft. have a problem with it. I didn't know Parra had had yeah. gone out and be like, "Oh, let's find yeah, they, out who was booing our player." I'm like, yeah, they had a they had a big problem with it. No, Parra that's soft as. I'm I'm done with Parra. I need yep. a new team. Someone someone needs to <laughs> buy me some merchandise, and I'll literally follow that team. So the first jersey you get a retro. If someone buys me a retro jersey team. the other team, I might follow that team. Do you want to drop that size? What do you mean? Do you want to drop your size? So you drop know. Drop my size. Oh, drop XL, your shirt size. XL. All right, there you go. There's a the challenge. If someone buys Denny an XL retro jersey, he will follow that team. <laughs> Can we get a confirmation? You know what? Let me think about it. Let me think about it for a week. Oh, oh mate. All right, we'll, we'll revisit that next week. Uh, anyway, the Broncos were really good here. Really important <laughs> win for the Broncos because. They've got to play the Eels twice, and you never know. They might meet up again in the semifinals if, if the Eels get there yeah. at this rate. Um, what did you make of the Broncos here? I thought they were, they were pretty good. Oh, no, I forgot you didn't watch the game. You're yeah. off the Eels. Uh, Adam Reynolds was awesome. They've they still got Selwyn Cobbo to come back. Pat Carrigan and Payne Haas, excellent. Payne Haas makes such a big difference yeah. to this team. But they were both really big. And then, because they were so good in the second half, I think Pat Carrigan got a good spell in the second half. That was just so effective. Eels, really disappointing. Really, really disappointing. I th- I, th- I still think they are they can beat the best sides, but they can be beaten by anyone else. So that's pretty yeah, rough. They can beat anyone, but they can lose to anyone. Yep, 100%. Uh, Dragons, 20 to Manly's 6. Uh, I thought... I thought the Dragons were the lock of the weekend after Troy Vich was... Oh, really? really? Yeah. I just... I, he does so much for their middle. And then Lock and Coco was ruled out as well. And then Davey, that's just too many middles for me. Oh, Dragons were good. Ben Hunt's flying. Ben Hunt would have got three points again in this game. Mate, he's killing uh, it at the moment. That, that was handy. Like, you could really say all those Queensland Origin players are kind of really carrying their form back to their club. Well, most of them are anyway. Yeah, yeah like, for sure. Ben Hunt's killing it. Cherry Evans is doing really well. Cam Munster's doing real well as well. Uh, yep. 
Yeah. Uh, I thought Ben Hunt was just great in this game, and they controlled the game. Like that's what, and that's what he does. He just controls the game so well. Um, they just starved man, manly of possession, yeah. really. Uh, what do you think th- this means for Manly? That was an important game for them, mm. but obviously they had a couple out. Yeah. They still sit in ninth on 20 points. I think, look, I, they've got to win most of their games from now on because the Roosters are looking pretty good. The Raiders are also looking good, and so are the Dragons. So to kind of make it, you've got to yeah. beat off a couple of those teams. So beat off a couple of the teams. You gotta, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm... <laughs> you gotta, yeah, yeah, beat yeah. them all off. <laughs> that that's the that's the quote from from that game. If Manly beat everyone off, they'll win. <laughs> they'll, they'll, <Bring> on. <laughs> Manly beat everyone off. They'll finish last and finish first. All right, on to the next game. Ben on on top there. The Knights twelve versus forty two. Uh, versus obviously specials here. Ponga goes down real early in this game. Hurts for your fantasy. Yeah. Uh, Rumours he might be out for the year. Uh, apparently he was, he was pretty inconsolable in the sheds, uh, upset. He's a player that really wants to play and perform for the Knights, but it just seems to get the HIA, get injured, and just play his best footy for Queensland. Yeah. So I know it's hurting Knights fans. I think it's hurting him just as much. Uh, do you think you will see him? I hope we year? do. He's been playing great. Um, but yeah, I, I just want to say, with the Matt Lodge, because like, Matt Lodge was something that hit him, even though there was nothing in it, like the Knights lost their best player for the entire game due to an illegal act, and it was put on report. Did he get charged with anything? Do you know? Uh, I can have a look. Yeah, yeah like for him look. just to like pretty much knock Caelan Pong around and rule him out for the rest of the game, like that's at least 10 million. doesn't matter if it was an accident or... How bad or how how it didn't look that bad? I still think you got to serve a bit of time in the bin. But um, yeah. Apart from that, yeah. Yeah, uh, Matt Lodge, Grade One, uh, careless high tackle, monetary fine, eighteen hundred. That's yeah. rough. So, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think there was there was talk of them looking uh, the NRL looking at if there is a player ruled out for an illegal act, then that person will have to go to the bin as well. I don't mind that because what's to stop... Um, oh, Kane Evans isn't in the NRL anymore, but say Kane Evans, middle of the road forward, isn't going to really impact the game, going and close line and Nathan Cleary and put him out for the whole game. You know what yeah. I mean? In a big game. What's to stop yeah. that from happening? Yeah. If he's not going to get any repercussions for that. Uh, I think... The Knights got to activate their 18th man because he was ruled out for the game from an illegal act, but I don't think it was enough. You'd rather that. have Caleb. I don't think it was enough. Oh, 100%. Uh, Leo Thompson, come on for them. Wow. What'd you make of the Roosters? I think oh. James Tedesco is playing really well. It was first time since really early in the year. Luke Cleary, uh, Luke Keary at six, Sam Walker at seven, uh, Joey Manu in the set. Uh, Joey Manu missed this game, but I think that's it's going to be interesting when he gets back. Because he's been so good at six, do you think they keep Kiri Walker oh, in the halves? I think you have to, and then I think you just give Joey Marnie license to roam, just like what um yep. what the New South Wales centers did back in Origin last year. Like they just popped up wherever. I think you just tell Joey Manu, look, you can defend out in the centers, but when we're attacking, you just fill in wherever you want. Yeah, wherever you see an opportunity. I think Latrell does that really well at South. I, I think he's got probably the lowest work rate of any fullback yeah. in the competition. But when he when he injects himself, it's always effective. I think he had three tries on the weekend, barely touched the ball yeah. other than that. So I think he knows when to get himself into the game. I think that's how Joey Martin should play as well, just sniff around the ball. They're so quick around the ruck when they play on the front foot. Like you've got Luke Keary likes to play on the ball. James Tedesco likes to play on the wall. You got Connor Watson when yep. he gets out there, so they're really good around the ruck. You add Joey Marnie to that, they could tear some teams apart up the middle of the park. But I reckon the Roosters are coming good. I think um, they've taken some time. They got to stay injury free though. They don't have a lot of depth, so I think they need and Joey Tedesco. out there. If Tedesco goes, he's they been need he's been awesome all year. He's been awesome. If Tedesco goes down, they might yeah, not win another it'll game. It'll be tough for him for sure. Yeah. Warriors defeat uh, Raiders defeat the Warriors twenty six fourteen. Oh, the Warriors man, they were up what fourteen yeah. mil at halftime. Game. Over. I don't understand why Reese Walsh is on the bench. 
I don't know, but he might not be there too much longer. I think Melbourne Melbourne have inquired about him. Melbourne have inquired about Josh Adokar. Melbourne have inquired about Dane about Laurie. The Fox. Yeah. They've already been knocked back for the Fox. Uh, Phil Gould says <clears throat> he's too important to the club. It's only for the rest of the year. That's what they've inquired about. Why don't you leave his name, Yeah, well they, well, they didn't know Pappenhausen was going to be injured. But they, they want... Uh, they've inquired about those three players. I know the are uh, the Josh Adokar one's been knocked back. As for the Dane Laurie one and Reese Walsh one, that's up in the air. Well, well, like a, is it like a play swap or just like an early release to their club? And, yeah, just to go there. Like a lone player? Go there for the rest of the year. Well, yep. let's see. Let's... I I could see probably the Dane Laurie going there over um what's his what's his name? Reese Walsh, yeah. Reese Walsh. If Reese Walsh is playing on the bench though. Does he want to go? Yeah, well I don't know if he'll get much of a say, but if he goes there, they're they're back in they're back in the conversation. If he goes to Melbourne, plays fullback. They're suddenly back. Are they though? Yeah, I think they're just missing that. Like, Meany's good back there, but they just... I don't think he's dangerous enough. Like, they, he, when they make their little breaks up the middle of the field, Nick Meany gets the ball, and it seems to break down a little bit. I think he's a good footballer, but he's definitely not Pappenhausen. And, and I think if you get Reese Walsh on the back of that, around some quality players, he's going to yeah. absolutely kill it. Let's talk a little bit about this game, though. The Raiders managed to come back. I think the Warriors have led the Raiders a couple times at half time and given up the lead, or vice versa. Uh, did, were you expecting the Warriors, uh, the Raiders, to come to back? Honest, to you? I didn't know what I could, what what I was expecting. Like, oh man, I well, I didn't expect twenty six points to nil in the second half for sure. Like, you thought that the Warriors were surely going to kick on, or at least put up some kind of fight, but it kind of just seemed like they kind of just died. They died in the arse at the last time. I saw a stat. Half, I saw a stat about the Warriors Raiders. I'll see yeah. if I can find the game, but. It was pretty much about the Warriors leading them at half time. Yeah, all the time. Mate, I was I was at work and I was like, like a few of the mates that I work, people that I work with, they're all Islanders, and I was like, yeah, bro, the Warriors up fourteen at half time. They're like, oh yeah, sweet. Then when the game ended, I came out and they were like, oh, what was the score? Yeah, and uh, Raiders won twenty six fourteen. Yeah, that's uh pretty standard for the Raiders. Um, no, I can't find the stat. I had the Raiders plus 12.5 in the first half, oh. which really hurt my soul. And then they come back plus on one. Half. Oh, that hurts. What, in like a multi? I know. Yeah. Yeah, in a multi. I think I won the, the last two legs too, which hurts even more. Yeah. Nah, screw the Raiders. Screw the Warriors. I tell you what, the Raiders can't be giving up those kind of leads to oh, the good for sides. 100%. Otherwise, the good sides will be uh, carrying on with it. And they got a good side this week. They got the Titans, so they better... <laughs> Fix up, look sharp. <laughs> Panthers, Sharkies. Oh, this is a good game. A uh, big moment in this game was obviously the Dolphin Nukin shot on... Crichton. Yeah. Stephen Crichton. Nothing what you think of that? There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. A bit of a head clash. Bit, like, big, yeah. that's... And he's getting charged with all the grade three. Unbelievable. Grade three. Yeah, the worst. Unbelievable. For what? It was dangerous contact. Uh, I didn't. I didn't agree with it. I thought it was a head clash. I think people are saying that it was bad tech, tackle technique. That's why he should be charged. It's not why he was charged though. Um, I think it's a head clash. I don't think he was leading with his head. I think yeah. it just got awkward. I think he's trying to change the game too. The Panthers were getting back on top. The Sharks led early and looked really good early. And then I think he was just trying to change momentum for his team. And I think if we take that away, we take a bit of aggression out of the game. Like what have we got left? How do, how do you change yeah. the game with your defense? Otherwise? If he gets charged, then oh, I don't know. Well, he's going to the judiciary. Uh, word on the street is that he'll fight it, and I think the Sharkies have gone and got like a big lawyer to help fight it as well. So, because that's what they do, they they actually get barristers and stuff in to like they lawyer fight up. this kind of stuff. They lawyer up. I know um, a couple of times Melbourne have got a really big lawyer to get Billy Slater off that one for the grand final <laughs> shot charge. <laughs> They got like one of the best lawyers in Melbourne. Cash as well, probably under the table. (laughs) (laughs) I won't won't talk to any of that. But um, this was a really good game. I thought the Sharks looked uh, really, really good, especially early. They look. It it kind of made Penrith look a little bit beatable to me. I think if they, if you can attack their outside backs and stop that go forward early. 
they can mm. get rattled this side. Because you remember, you got to think, Targo and Taylor May, they're pretty young. Stephen Crichton is not... He's not like a big no. figure, is he? Like, he's not... Um, you saw he's him like- in Origin. You drive him back, you can get he, you can get under him a little bit. And then, Toto. who you got left then? Who's the other one? Toto, he's a gun. <laughs> okay. But you need to get... If you get into this back five, you can stop their momentum... And then you kind of dominate him a little bit. And, you know, Jerome Luai doesn't like playing yeah. off the back foot too much. I think he's he's just getting uh, less liked by the day, that Jerome Luai. I posted that video of him saying bye-bye oh, after yeah. he scored. Yeah. People hated it. Hated it. Uh, what did you make of the Sharks here? I, yeah. think, I thought yeah, this was a great game. They looked really good early on, and I was thinking, hold on. Are they going to, like, run up a score here on Penrith? Like, is, are they the team to kind of, like, break them? But, um... Yeah, then Penrith kind of just do what Penrith do. They just hang in there, play the full 80, come out with the win, I guess. Yeah. I think Kikau was really good. Kikau's had a great season, I think. I think defensively, he's just mm. shutting down these halfbacks. He hit, uh, hit Nico Hines a couple of times that just absolutely kills the play dead. So I think he's playing really well. He's going to be big for them come the semi final. He's going to be good for mm. the uh, Bulldogs next year, too. So will Reed Marnie. We won't talk about that, though. Hopefully, he backflips. Yeah. All right. Well, you you might not even be there anyway. <laughs> uh, Rabbitohs defeat the Storm. Storm lose four in a row. Oh my god. Uh, I don't know about the Storm. Rabbitohs. I think they've scored the most points of any team since the Latrells come back. Uh, I'm pretty sure. And they've just looked great. And like I said, he didn't have a ton of involvement. I think he has probably the least. Like I said earlier, I think he has probably the least uh, work rate of any fullback. But when he does get involved, it's always high quality. It's always big touches. Look, he had, look at this. He had yeah. eight runs. The bloke had like three tries. Yeah. So there, there you go. There's, what's that? What's that strike rate? It's up there, forty something percent. Yeah. 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 He's killing it. He's absolutely killing it. Um, two line break assists as well, which would have been yeah. probably for the tries. I hate that they say dummy passes. He threw a dummy. You see, no. He threw one dummy pass. I hate that. Yeah, one dummy pass. Uh, what did you make of Sousy? They were, I mean, yeah, they were good. Melbourne were bad, but yeah, Sousy were good. I thought you you had Sousy moving into fifth, in didn't you? And I had them winning that game. Oh, I had the Storm winning. And I thought there was a moment right after half time, the Storm break the, break the line. Was the score at halftime? 10 6. So if the, the Storm had a score just after half time, I think it would have been a different game. But they kind of bump, they bomb that try there. I think Cam Munster tries to throw it back on the inside. And who's the back rower? Uh, Bromwich. Yeah, Bromwich ends up knocking it on. And then from then on, they didn't look likely. But if they go over there, then it goes 12 6. It's a little bit Melbourne of a different dynamic. Couldn't seem to hold the ball. Like they. No. Nah. No. Nah. Yeah, they were just. They, they killed but, their own their own chances at at scoring or or winning that game. They shot to the sheds at half-time, and there was a couple of players there that, for the life of me, I couldn't have told you their name. Like, there was... There's just some people in that team that... Like, Alec McDonald, he he had a couple of errors. Who's the the, um, winger, too? Who ended up playing the winger? That Green Anderson. He's bang average. I'm not sure if he's a winger, that bloke. He's bang average. Uh... Alex Johnson, try scoring machine too. He's probably going to beat the all time. What is the all time tries in the game? I don't know. Ken Ken Irvine said it. Uh, let's have a look. How old is Alex Johnson? Let's let's see how old he is first. He's twenty. He's only twenty seven. He's younger than met us. Yeah, two. Yeah, twenty two hundred and twelve tries. Yeah, is the record. And Johnson just needs like another fifty. He's still got like. He's still got he like eight a year. good years left in him. Yeah. So he's on uh, 157. So he'll go past Josh Morris probably in a, a week or two. Like if he scores a double this week, he'll go to he'll go to equal eighth on the all-time list with Hazem and Matty Singh. It's only 27. Billy Slater's second with 190 ah. tries. But 157 tries That's ain't bad. Uh, could be better. Could, yeah. could be 158. How many is he bombed? Is that a stat? Um, no, no, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. Just go through all these games and tell right me. Right now? 
Okay. Yep. All right. On to the next game. I went to this game. It was great weather out there. The Bulldogs defeat the Titans 36-26. Seemed like any time the Bulldogs were going to kick away, the Titans that managed to drag a try uh, just kept them with the arm, arms within arm's reach. But I didn't think this was ever in doubt for the Dogs. I think the Titans might have scored three or four tries off kicks too. So, Doggy's good. What do you the think? Fox. How good is he? The Fox and Burton. Yeah, that's second in the... That's second intercept try. He was probably four oh, meters offside, he? though. The Fox. Yeah, he's a mile <laughs> offside. Absolute mile. Um, but they can't challenge that. You can't. You can't check a. You can't check an offside. Oh, apparently. Unlucky. Yeah, uh, only the Cowboys care. can challenge it. No, <laughs> no one else. Uh, he was great. I think he broke the uh, speed record for this game too. I think he ended up going into the thirty-eight. So he's back to being the fastest on the man planet. on the planet for the year. Yep. <laughs> on the planet. Uh, he, he was really good. Matty Burton. I think Matty Burton had, what, how many points is that? Two tries. Eight. So he had 28 points by himself. Or 18 points by himself. 20 18. Points, yeah. No, 20 points. 20 points. Yeah, 20 points by himself. Yeah, 20. And then Yadin the Fox. Was that 12? Yeah, that's 32, 32 points. points. 32 of the 36 right there, there between go. them two. What did you make of the uh, Bulldogs versus Tino? I thought it made for a really fun yeah, game. Good. I thought Tino's it was good. Cat. Oh, he just is. Why? He just is. What? I don't like him anymore. I'm off him. Nah, he's all right. Um, I didn't like that they took him off when TP, like Tavita Pengai Jr. come on. And then the, pretty much the whole time Tavita Pengai Jr. was on, he was off. And then <clears> he goes off. He and taken, Tino comes he back. He would have taken Tino. Didn't anyway. like that. I wish he did. He would have tried. They, they had one run at each other, one run, and it was cool. Like it was good. It ended up ended up in a penalty because Tino was like pulling into the ground, and the referee didn't like it too much. Yeah, me but too. I wish it kicked off. We need more of that. Bring back the Biff, please. Did you? Could you hear the Tino's a wanker much nah, through the uh, TV? Couldn't really hear much of the chance because more the booze. Because there's like massive Tino's a wanker chant like yeah, many could. times. He is. There was like kids. I saw kids chanting Tino's a wanker. Start them young. Start them young. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think we need to talk about last game. I think we spent a lot of time on that. Uh, I think the Tigers probably deserved a win there. Uh, what even hurts, even more for <clears throat> Tigers fans, their graphic designer tweeted a photo. Tigers win 26 25. to yeah. 25. That hurts. Yeah. I wouldn't even Early delete throw. it. I would just Early not. Throw. I just would not go back on the website <laughs> on that page. No, nah, no. Nah. There's there's a position to overturn the result and anything that's and everything that's got some uh, traction. I think. Should they? Let's not. Let's just move on. Like let's promise to be better from now. I say, Cowboys are in second. Now, right second. Warranted. Overturn the decision. All right. Uh, by the way, to end the stream, Panthers are now at even two bucks to win the comp. What were they before? Do you know? Do you know the odds before? Uh, I think they're like three dollars fifty going in the weekend. Two dollars is short. Oh, you'd be picking another team with those odds. Yeah. Cl- closest to them seven fifty. That'd be Melbourne. Cowboys. Melbourne are at eight dollars. Uh, Sharkies are at eight fifty. Then you've got to go out to. The Broncos and Rabbitohs are at 15. And then the Eels are at 21. Roosters 26. And then anything below that's 40 north. Thanks for that. Yep. Cowboys on top. Raiders, uh, Raiders robbed. Raiders robbed. Okay. Raiders robbed. Yeah. Raiders <laughs> robbed. <laughs> Tigers robbed. Danny might be looking for a new team. We'll be back on Wednesday with that answer. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs>